is a dream, time like a stream carries our burdens away. Never despair, joys everywhere, love can befriend you today. Free from all care, like birds on the air, soar above griefs and worries, seek joy and be gay. Often on earth, things of great worth, worldly ambitions defy. Sometimes a friend helps us ascend up from life's cares to the sky. Love is a star, though shining afar. It can guide us and help us toward light to draw nigh. Life is a dream, time like a stream carries our burdens away. Never despair, joys everywhere, love can befriend you today. Free from all care, like birds on the air, soar above griefs and worries, seek joy. Sometimes a friend helps us ascend up from life's cares to the sky. Love is a star, though shining afar, it can guide us and help us toward light to draw nigh. Love is a star, though shining afar, it can guide us and help us toward light to draw nigh. Master said he had so many visions, he's brushed them away. They were, they were an obstacle to him, but that's not most people's problem. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> Um, what we can say is that uh, it's important to learn how to discriminate between a subconscious and a superconscious. I remember in meditation many years ago suddenly seeing a large green face. I don't think it was superconscious. <clears throat> but somebody who had never seen any kind of face might say, wow, Krishna. <laughs> of course, Krishna is blue, not green. But anyway, <laughs> close enough. Um, so people get, get very confused about the kinds of visions that they have, the experiences that they have. They have a tendency to take some little thing and blow it up into a big experience. And in fact, that's another reason not to get attached to your experiences, because what you want is cosmic consciousness, not some little vision of angels or something. All of these can be very nice, but they're not what it's all about. Now then, many people call these subconscious visions false. They're not false completely. In one sense, we can call them all false because they're all phenomena. Everything out of God is a phenomenon. Everything out of God is something temporary, ephemeral, and only in the absolute vision of God can you say that you've reached beyond phenomena. Yet, there are different levels of reality. This world that we're in right now, are, are, it too is a dream. It's, however, not, it's not unreal. It's real, but as a dream. 
You see, when, you, when you're dreaming and you see things, you're seeing things. It's real that you're seeing them. It's just that it's not objectively true. Other people don't see them. And so what you experience on the subconscious plane needn't necessarily be something to, to be afraid of or to feel badly about. The subconscious mind, the imagination, can in fact be a help. The, it ceases to be a help if you, if you get attached to it, if you start seeking that instead of going always beyond that. And it can be a help if seeing that you offer back to God whatever it is that you've seen. Thus it is that any experience that you get can be good for you if you always offer it back to uh, the reality behind all phenomena. In this sense, then, we must see that uh, the experience of the subconscious is actually a path to the superconscious. Master said you have to go through the subconscious to attain the superconscious. I, I think you can bypass the subconscious, but it's, it's very close. When you get into deep meditation, you come to that dividing line between the superconscious and the subconscious. It's a very fine dividing line. If at that point you don't put out the willpower to enter the superconscious, you may slip into the subconscious. And you can see all kinds of things, hear all kinds of things, and uh, uh, may even take them for real. How do you distinguish, however, between the superconscious and the subconscious? Well, first of all, that criterion that I mentioned in the beginning, which is that it won't really affect you. A superconscious vision will more deeply affect you, whereas a subconscious vision and your subconscious dreams that you have at night, these things are sometimes interesting, sometimes scary, but uh, never do they really have a profound impact on you because they're on a superficial level of your mind. A really deep experience will be, first of all, very calm. There will be an underlying consciousness of joy. There's always a feeling of, of joy and deep calmness when there is a true experience. Um, joy less than calmness. Sometimes, after all, what you're being given is uh, a warning. It may be frightening. So you, can you speak of joy in that case? Yes, if you're detached enough, you'll feel the joy. But if not, you won't. Yet calmness will definitely be there. Calmness is the is that what you require in order to be deep enough for it to be a superconscious experience. So what you have when you have an ephemeral experience, uh, uh, a merely subconscious or imaginary experience, is something that doesn't touch you deeply enough to change you, something that isn't very vibrantly and deeply calm, the, the light, if you see it, won't be brilliant. It will be sort of dim. Um, the joy, if you feel it, will be a, a merely emotional thing. It'll be, it won't be pure joy. It won't be an intense joy. It'll be uh, a merely emotional reaction. Welcome again, friends. This is such an important topic today because we all have different experiences and some of them may be super conscious, some of them aren't super conscious. Um, but I think it's important self-honesty and also to really offer up whatever experience we have, as Swamiji said, back to God and not to take it to ourselves and think, oh, I had this and no one else had that and now I'm special and they're not special and on and on. And this is why Master said, don't tell your inner experiences to others, but to keep them safeguarded in your heart. And I was remembering once when Swamiji said he had some experience and he, he went to Master and said, oh, Master, this happened. and and I don't know, this happened and that happened. And Master looked at him and he just said, that's nothing. And I think if that's so humbling, if we just think whatever is happening, it's just a speck. It's the very beginning of going into deep, deep levels of consciousness. And as we offer them up, then God can give us more because we're more open, we're more receptive. I was um, remembering, a story that Master 
told an actual experience of a man who came to him and he said that he did astral traveling and and master said oh really and he says well um let's see why don't you show me and so the man was sitting there and uh then he he's he his eyes were blinking he was restless and nervous and and he said to master why don't you ask me where i am and master said okay where are you i'm on the dome on the top of the dome of the taj mahal and master said there must be something wrong with your dome because you're sitting right here <laughs> so the man he opened his eyes he says well i i can do that i'll tell you what's happening downstairs in the restaurant master went along no master said to him if you can go that far tell me what's happening in the restaurant and the man said um okay this and that is happening and master said no it's not and he took the man master described it perfectly he took the man downstairs and he showed him and he said you're making this up all in your mind and a lot of times people have some little thing that happens as Swamiji said, and they blow it up it's a big thing and i recall when i was in australia for ananda some years back um i I just couldn't believe almost everybody had some deep spiritual out of body and various kinds of oh this happened and I I went up in a spaceship and I'm swimming with the dolphins and it went on and on and and this one woman who I thought this is the only woman I can rely on she was the accountant for the group and an accountant in life and 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 she just looked very centered and strong and and um so we we were going to a sad one of the sad songs and as soon as we entered the room she she looked up and she says look the chandelier is moving can you see the chandelier i said the chandelier is not moving <laughs> it's still but this was in her mind and we have to realize that a lot of these things are as swamiji said they're subconscious you have to go through them with your will with centeredness with focus with attunement uh with energy breaking through those are clouds beyond the clouds are the sun and the sun of realization and swamiji would tell us the story that you must have heard from master of uh trilanga swami who um he wanted to have a an outer experience of god of the divine mother and there was a murti he was with his guru one day and the, his guru said okay well divine mother will give you that experience today and so they were in one room and they went to i guess it was like a meditation room where there was a beautiful murti of a divine mother and and uh they saw that murti and then what happened was the murti came to life and came into where they were sitting sat down and talked with this man this devotee and then got up and left and so the guru his guru looks at him and says now what do you have meaning it has to be something that's inside of yourself you can't keep looking for outer phenomena you have to look for god within yourself and so as we are on the path we notice that if we can inwardly seek those deeper experiences then they begin to come as peace maybe as love maybe as joy you recall when master went into samadhi for the first time with his guru he came out of that state and after not very long after he asked swami shri tesra he says well sir when will i find god and his guru said what do you mean you found god and he said no, i don't think i have sir and swami shri tesra he said well i see you're thinking you're looking for phenomena and he said god is in yourself as joy god is joy and you'll even find him in everything every part of your life even in the details don't look for god and phenomena and so then master said oh i guess i have found him because i do feel joy i do feel bliss 
And we have to remember that with the right attitudes, God can come to us. With the wrong attitudes, the doors close because that's all ego. I remember someone who <clears throat> took Kriya some years back and, and came afterwards and says, oh, no, I'm, I, I don't see the spiritual eye. <laughs> you know? And I said, what are you looking for? Look what you have in your hands. And people are looking for something else. And this woman came to Swamiji after six months of practicing meditation. I don't even think she had Kriya. She said, I've been meditating six months and I'm not in Samadhi yet. And so these are the wrong attitudes that I'm looking outwardly. I'm looking to give gifts. I'm not looking at what I can give. I'm not looking with a grateful heart. I'm not looking with openness. I'm not looking with love and joy and selflessness and giving. I'm, I'm looking like a beggar. I want more and more and more. And when our attitude is right, then God comes. And otherwise, it could be there, as, as Swamiji said, I love this master had so many visions, he just brushed them aside. They were just distractions. There was a woman who came to <clears throat> Dr. Lewis's meditation group. And um, her first time, she could see through the walls. She, could, she, she saw the thousand petal lotus. And what happened to her? She never came back. Sometimes Divine Mother gives you deep experiences at the beginning to just show you that she her love for you then there's that middle ground where maybe nothing will happen for decades but her love is still there and also that's like a testing ground do you love me for who i am or do you love me for what i give and so for all of us <clears throat> let's remember that when our when we have the right attitudes then god comes i I remember a man who lived at Ananda Village when I first went there, and uh, you never saw him. He was, he never, I mean, never was at anything, but he just said, oh, I, I just meditate. I, I'm on my own. I meditate. He never lifted a finger to help anybody. No seva, nothing. He never, he never, he paid his rent at the community. And he said, no, he just meditates. Now, he obviously, some attitudes were wrong there. And of course, he left. So the most important thing is not what am I getting, but what is my attitude from my meditations? What are, what are the behaviors that have changed? What are the attitudes that have changed? Am I more loving? Am I more selfless? And am I more giving? Not give me, give me, give me. I'm, I'm sitting because I want something. Not I'm sitting because I'm here for love. I'm here out of love. I'm not here looking for something. And Swamiji said so beautifully that when he, when the first time he met Master, he said, when Master touched him at his heart, he was changed forever. Now that was an experience. The guru transmitted into Swamiji's heart his love. And that was a deep experience. When we get blessed in Kriya, now that's an experience. When we do our Kriya, that's an experience. When we get blessed as a disciple, that's an experience of God. When we serve and we feel God's joy and love flowing through us, that's an experience. And finally, whatever comes to us, let us take it into our daily life and not hold, hold, oh, I'm, not, I'm not going outside because I'm, I'm looking for that experience that experience of God again, just be natural. I remember Swamiji saying that he was, he said to master, um, I'm doing this, I'm trying this, I'm doing this technique, I'm doing that, I'm not getting anywhere. And he said, am I not trying hard enough? And master said, you're trying too hard. Just be natural. Open your heart naturally to God. And when master, after he had that blissful experience of Samadhi, as I spoke about with Swami Sri Teswarji. Then afterwards, he dropped down at the feet of his guru. Swami Sri Teswarji picked him up and said, now fetch a broom, let us sweep the balcony. <laughs> and he didn't want Master to get over drunk with that outer, with that experience of God. He wanted him to have a balanced existence, a balanced life. 
and for all of us, whatever we have, let it let it pour into whatever comes let, or doesn't come. Let God pour into your heart, pour into your life, and go into your daily life. And whatever comes, whatever doesn't come, you have to know that God is always there. And that if you show your face, Divine Mother, I'm happy to see you. If you don't show your face, I know you're still there. Offer everything that comes back into Divine Mother's arms and you feel that she's ever there with you. God bless you. Now we have a few questions. I'll ask Natendra to come on screen. Thank you, Dhananji. Let me share the questions. And if you have any other questions, you all can please type that in chat. Dhananji, the first question is, I am a beginner with meditation and nothing happens. I do not see any light or hear Om. Am I doing something wrong? Well, it's good to get your practices checked, isn't it? Some people are doing things that aren't right or they've slackened off. They're not particularly, some people aren't doing the mudra right with Om. Some people aren't practicing Hong Sa properly. It could be that. But these things take time and patience and openness and also non-attachment. Like, like I said, don't be attached. That it's like a, a beggar. I'm coming here to beg from God. Just be there. And uh, I remember when I first began meditating, I just loved it. I didn't care what happened. I was so happy to be meditating. I just was so grateful that I learned how to meditate. And I felt it was from past lives that I had meditated. I just was, I was so happy. I didn't know if anything was ever going to happen. I was just happy to be able to meditate. And, and I wasn't meditating well, but I loved those moments of silence, of quiet. So I think the thing is just in whatever is, just bathe yourself in that. If it's just quiet from the kids and relatives around you, you just have five minutes or 10 minutes to yourself, just bathe yourself in that quiet. Just be happy I have, I have five minutes by myself. You see the difference? And then if, more comes to you, hallelujah. But if more doesn't come, my God, if we're Kriya bonds in this lifetime and we're able to even have an opportunity to feel the presence of God at, at any moment, that's so much more than people have. Look at their faces. People are so unhappy. They're so fearful. They're so much wanting more money, house, car, everything. If you don't, if you have in your heart, I want God, that's enough. And if Divine Mother gives you more, fine. Master asked her when he's when he found God, he said, I asked Divine Mother, I said, I've been praying all these years. How come you didn't come before? And she said to Master, Oh, there were just a few desires there. They were still there. So think of us. There's a long list of desires. <laughs> no, but uh, when you sit to meditate, no, I want this, but then afterwards, I want this, I want that. It can't be that way. So let, let the natural flow of our spiritual life happen. Let it take place. You can't sprint down the path. Just go your, go your way, go your speed. Some people are sprint for a while, then they walk, then they jog maybe, then they sit on the sidelines for a while. Just be natural. And the worst thing you can do is get upset. Nothing's happening. I know I knew nothing would happen. Everybody else is in the bliss state. Well, I doubt it. So I think everyone struggles. But the, if you have the attitude that you're struggling, that's the problem. You see the difference? If you have the attitude that I love sitting there. I don't care if any, nothing happens. I'm having a wonderful time. It's all in your attitude. And uh, like that uh, fellow who, um, he went, this disciple went to 
his guru was Chai, Sri Chaitan, Chaitanya, Chaitanya. And he was telling the disciples this day how long it would take them to find God. And for one, he said, oh, just a few years for you. One, oh, I don't know, several more years. They were upset. They'll take them several more years. And this, his chief disciple came. He said, what about me, Master? And he said, oh, my God, a thousand years. And the disciple went off, went outside on the porch. And the others were going, oh, my God, he's got a thousand years to wait to find God. And they went out, and the disciple was just dancing in joy on the porch. And the others came out and they said, didn't you hear that the master says it's gonna take you a thousand more lifetimes. And he says, brothers, didn't you hear? He said, I would find God. And his guru came out and touched him. And then that moment he found God. You have to understand, it's their attitude. So just know master he said i'm sick of people saying when will i find god when will i have god he said you have him live it now live with them now so in that way then you always feel his joy his love his presence no matter where you are how ill you are how unill you are how much money you have how much money you don't have a bigger house a little your house this won't matter anymore thank you Dhanaji. We have a live question. You mentioned about a Kriya initiation being an experience. So can you elaborate about how is the Kriya initiation a real experience? Well, the guru comes into your consciousness and changes you through the blessing at the spiritual eye. Remember when Master blessed Swamiji with Kriya, even before his formal initiation, he said, I'm sending the divine light into your consciousness, consciousness, which will change your brain or your brain cells or something like that. And, and so there's uh, the power of God to the guru that's implanted in the disciple, in your consciousness. It's like a seed, isn't it? But then you have to water the seed. You can't say every day, uh, <laughs> give me another. It's like he gives you that blessing and then you have to work for it the rest. Even though, you know, 25% is our effort, 25% is Guru's help and 50% is God's grace. But yeah, at that moment, I'm sure anybody who's taken Kriya feels completely changed. You can see from the faces when you go out of the room, those are the best looking faces ever. Isn't it? They're just so bright and free from fear and worry and tensions. Just, it's the face of really Divine Mother. A lot happens during those blessings. A blessing even when you're at satsang, purification blessing, discipleship blessing. There's a transmission of the power of the guru into the disciple or into the devotee. Thank you, Dhanaji. The next question is, I've been meditating for some years now and I'm still restless and don't feel that I meditate that well. And I've not had any experiences either. Can that ever happen? Is this a new person or long time? They've been meditating a while. Yeah, meditating a while. Well, what does discouragement do? Nothing, but bring your energy down. And in a moment, God can come to you. And this, I mean, read the stories. I was listening to Autobiography of a Yogi, the story, Two Penniless Boys in Brindaban. It's just such a great story. Just, you know, to en encourage yourself, Read the stories of the great ones. Read master stories. Read the stories of the saints. And they're so inspiring. And they went through a lot to get to that point. I was reading, I was listening to master story when he left his guru once he met him and he went off to the Himalayas and he said, uh, he came back after some time and I think it was 
28 days and and uh and his guru said poor boy mountains couldn't give you what you wanted and then he strikes him on the chest and he goes into samadhi and so you know god can come at any time so don't don't be discouraged that's that's the worst thing just be happy and many people have difficulties with one technique or another hung so i can't keep my mind still oh i don't hear anything kriya i can't get my energy in the spine and just do your best there were people who couldn't meditate at all well and matt what did master say just i'll meditate for you now that's not everybody <laughs> but he did tell one i'll meditate for you and another who said guruji i i can serve well but i just don't meditate that well and he said well serve then and if you if that's what you can do put your heart into service and swamiji even at near the end of his life many years though before he left his body i don't know how many but some years i should say he said he couldn't do kriya well because he had heart conditions and he couldn't do kriya i met one of my friends she said she went to swamiji and said i'm having trouble meditating swamiji and he said so am i <laughs> so, i mean it happens so here again have just do your best I mean, honestly, what all can we do? Are you gonna open up your own spiritual eye by yourself? Well, try it, I, I think you can. Are you gonna open all the chakras by yourself? No, are you gonna lift the Kundalini up on your own? Try, you know, <laughs> you can try. You know, so much comes from grace. We open ourselves or turn our cup up so that God's grace can come in. And we have to do our part, but we're, we can't bring the grace. That's Divine Mother, that's God. And I am I really feel, and I've heard many times Swamiji say, these deep inner experiences are come from the hand of the Guru. And they come when you're ready. And if you're not ready and if it's not right for you, you don't get it. My prayer is always, Master, whatever you want is what I want. I don't want anything else. I don't want any diversions, no pitfalls. I don't want to see anything or do anything that's going to divert me from my path to God. So that's better than, hey, I want a vision. Hey, give me something, some phenomena. It's just like I've seen people fall. Do you want to fall? Go for it if you do, but rather say, Guruji, I'm yours, you're the boss, you know, and I, I am following you. And if nothing comes, say, I'm still following you. Doesn't that make better sense? And that way you avoid many more lifetimes, probably, seeking phenomena, isn't it? Thank you, Zanaji. We have one last question. Okay. How do you know that God's presence or Guru's presence is with me in meditation? Because it all seems so subtle. Yeah, I feel that way too. It is subtle. Sometimes you just say, come out of the darkness. Come out, stop hiding. <laughs> and many times I think that's a lot of people's prayers. It's my prayer a lot of times. Stop hiding. Just come out and show yourself. But Master said, Divine Mother, he said that she's shy. She doesn't want to come out and show because, and, and I remember one talk, he said, if God comes and talks to you, all people want to do is argue. They just want to argue back and forth with them. And so he's shy, just, and, and he said, Master said, God's voice is silence. And if you want to commune with him, you have to go into the silence. So you have to go inside. You can't just, uh, you, you can't say, come down. Divine Mother saying, you have to come up to me. Isn't that beautiful? And so then we lift ourselves up and then we see, oh, there you are. You weren't hiding at all. You were just there and I was here. I had to lift myself up to be able to see you and be with you. And finally, Master, so sweetly called Divine Mother his playmate because he said she's hiding 
it's like hide and seek and then i found you <laughs> i found you this time so just make it make it a joyful experience and feel in meditation you feel in your heart of deep peace and calmness as swamiji said you may feel joy one thing isn't the excitement like oh, i'm excited oh this is a look what happened you know that's just this is if it was anything is not there anymore like people see the spiritual look you know <laughs> it is gone immediately wow there's the ohm then it's finished so just be calm be centered in yourself and be in the silence and the stillness within and that's her hiding place and you can say that you too she too is your playmate that's so sweet when you can be with divine mother in that way and that's not phenomena that's a deep inner experience god bless you all thank you thank you natendra have a wonderful day bye bye